on our altar, right in front of the candle of remembrance. There are three smooth stones. The first is for our living tradition. The second is for consenting relationships. And the third is for justice. James Luther Adams wrote about the five smooth stones of liberal religion, and justice is the third stone. This is part of what he said. Religious liberalism affirms the moral obligation to direct one's efforts toward the establishment of a just and loving community. It is this which makes the role of the prophet central and indispensable in liberalism. If we need and work for justice, who are our prophets? Prophets help us remember what has happened and speak the truth of it, especially when the truth has been hidden. Transgender Day of Remembrance began in 1999. Transgender woman Gwendolyn Ann Smith founded the commemoration to memorialize the brutal murder of transgender woman Rita Hester in Alston, Massachusetts in 1998, and also other trans women who had died in that year. And since then, every November 20th, People remember and speak the names of the trans people who are known to have died of violence in the last year. The UUA and many, many other organizations hosted services this past Friday, um, and many people all around the world participated. This year, it is 37 people in the U.S., um, who were named in this memorial, and that's the largest number in 21 years. Most of those remembered are trans women of color. Most of them are under 35 years old. The majority are Black and Latine. Their names, pictures, and stories of their lives and deaths are linked in the order of service email. I invite you to look at their faces today. Another thing about prophets. Prophets help us face our emotions when we would rather stay all in our heads. This is the 51st year of the National Day of Mourning. Um, this text comes from the United American Indians of New England website. Since 1970, Native Americans and our supporters have gathered at noon on Coles Hill in Plymouth to commemorate a national day of mourning on the U.S. Thanksgiving holiday. Many Native Americans do not celebrate the arrival of the pilgrims and other European settlers. Thanksgiving Day is a reminder of the genocide of millions of Native people, the theft of Native lands, and the relentless assault on Native culture. Participants in the Day of Mourning honor Native ancestors and the struggle of Native peoples to survive today. It is a day of remembrance and spiritual connection, as well as a protest of the racism and oppression which Native Americans continue to experience. This coming Thursday is not the same day many of us would usually celebrate due to the pandemic, but it holds a different meaning for the Native people of this continent who have suffered hundreds of years of genocide, land theft, and oppression. This refocus on mourning by Native people and their allies opens us up to holding the story of what really happened. How British colonizers scouted along the Eastern shore, abducted people, and after European diseases had wiped out 
entire towns moved into the places where they had been. How the national policy of the United States has been set up from the beginning to deprive Native people of land, rights, language, culture, religion, and even their own children. Holding this true story is part of the work of being a person on this continent, work we all need to do. Another thing, prophets teach us to give thanks for what has brought us to this moment to ground ourselves in gratitude. The Odnoshoni Thanksgiving Address is not about the holiday Thanksgiving. It's about the process of actually giving thanks for all things. In communities throughout the Odnoshoni Confederacy, this address begins every gathering. A commonly available version begins like this. Today we have gathered and we see that the cycles of life continue. We have been given the duty to live in balance and harmony with each other and all living things. So now we bring our minds together as one and we give greetings and thanks to each other as people. Now our minds are one. We are all thankful to our mother, the earth, for she gives us all that we need for life. She supports our feet as we walk about upon her. It gives us joy that she continues to care for us as she has from the beginning of time. To our mother, we send greetings and thanks. Now our minds are one. And it continues. This is about a tenth of the full text of the widely shared 1993 Thanksgiving Address. It continues by outlining our relationships to everything on the planet. Gratitude is relationship in a world of transaction. Gratitude is anti-commodification. Nothing and no one is expendable. Prophets also show us how to greet the future with resilience. Forward Together is an intersectional collective focused on transforming culture, nurturing communities, and protecting all types of families. Since 2014, they have presented Trans Day of Resilience celebrating the poetry, visual art, and activism by and for trans people of color. S.A. Smith's poem was just one of this year's offerings, but their purpose is not celebration for its own sake. From their website, our rebellious morning recommits us to the living we refuse to forget or forfeit our power, even in the face of epidemic violence. We remember, we are pure possibility. Our freedom dreams could set the whole world free. With art as our portal, we imagine and femifest the world we deserve. May this project for and by trans people of color help us see ourselves safe and cherished, rested and healed, fully alive. Let's dream and shape an irresistible future together. It's working. These dreams link us to each other. Movement for Collective Liberation Elder Angela Davis said this in an interview this summer. We support the trans community precisely because this community has taught us how to challenge that which is totally accepted as normal. And I don't think we would be where we are today 
encouraging ever number ever larger numbers of people to think within an abolitionist frame had not the trans community taught us that it is possible to effectively challenge that which is considered the very foundation of our sense of normalcy. So if it is possible to challenge the gender binary, then we can certainly effectively resist prisons, jails, and police. Together, following the leads of prophets, like trans activists, like generations of indigenous people, we are creating a future with more justice. This year, at this time of harvest, let us not see the bounty hauled into the barns as a commodity. Let's see the work in the harvest. The smiles, blisters, and tears of the laborers. Let's see our interdependence and know that there is no freedom until all of us are free. Let us imagine forward to the future we co-create where people are free and justice in the words of the prophet Amos runs down like waters. <laughs>